Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. And it's also gonna let you get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free, and it's part of what we're doing every day at Uauth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below, and the special session that you want to watch and experience we'll start right now welcome this is Darius Barazande and in this video I want to share with you some of the secrets of the universe that were actually taught in the ancient mystic and mystery schools and the hermetic philosophies that were taught by the gods I'm speaking of Hermes in Greece Thoth in Egypt and Mercury the god Mercury in Rome and this relates back to the ancient emerald tablets and some of the secrets taught in these deep mystery schools to initiates many thousands of years ago. And some of these principles we're going to be speaking about are seven of the principles that actually formulate the cornerstones of alchemy, magic, and most of our new age thought. And they are found in a book that many of you have probably seen called the Kaibalan, the Kaibalan or the Kaibalan. Uh, and this book is really interesting. I want to walk through some of the principles here and show you a little bit as to how they relate to your life. And if you've heard this before or heard of this book, Kaibalan or Kaibalan, we are going to be actually taking these seven principles and giving you examples that you can use to actually bring them into your life and be aligned with this ancient wisdom. Many say this is the cornerstone of how the universe actually works and that the god Thoth had um, literally unlocked this through these principles. And uh, Thoth also is said to have given us writing, mathematics, numbers, and much more. So let's get started. Uh, when we talk about the Kaibalan, there is a quote that's very famous and well-known uh, from the Kaibalan, and it is this, the principles of truth are seven. He who knows these, understandably, possesses the magic key before whose touch all the doors of the temple fly open. So quite an interesting uh, opening quote. And here are the seven principles which the entire hermetic philosophy is based. The principle of mentalism, and rather than list them all out, I'm going to walk through them all and then we can begin to discuss some examples in your life. So mentalism is the first principle, and it's very simple. And here's how you can really grasp it. All is mind. The universe is mental. And if you have ever wanted something or thought about something or tried to really figure it out, you may have begun to realize that a lot of it is about perception. The perceptions we hold in our mind create reality. The great masters, Thoth and Hermes in Greece, understood that everything is mental, that the world is mental. We are seeing the world not through our eyes, but we are seeing through eyes that are actually seeing from the brain. So our brain is filtering our reality based on our beliefs. And all the uh, laws of created things are governed by this mind. And when we can actually begin to use and channel the mind, we can shift our reality. And there's more you can read on this page. Go a little deeper. I'll share this page with you down below. The other thing I want to share as well is this second law, which is the principle of correspondence. It can be summed up really simply that as above so below. These laws were utilized to form the basis of astronomy and the sciences. The ancient Hermes believed that this principle was one of the most important mental instruments by which men and women were able to pry aside the obstacles that hid the view from the unknown. The reason is that while we could 
trying to understand our world as being having, let's say, light and dark, good and bad, up and down, we may not be able to go into the higher dimensions like the fourth and fifth dimension right now or at the time the Kaibalon was written. But if we also understand that in those dimensions, there is good and bad, light and dark, up and down. They're higher vibrational entities, lower vibrational entities. They're um, light entities, dark entities. There's this duality here on earth and also there. And so we don't necessarily want to fight the duality because if we fall into the same energy vibration that the side we are fighting against or pushing against or trying to transform against, fighting is not the right word, but you get what I'm saying, then we become part of that side. So if we're trying to bring in more light to the world, we don't want to become dark in trying to bring the light because that duality will be there. Now, at the same time, we can know that these energies are also working above us and below us. So even if we reach a high level of enlightenment, there's still people struggling with the same laws and principles at lower levels of understanding. Now, the third principle is the principle of vibration. Here it is. Nothing rests, everything moves, and everything vibrates. There is nothing that doesn't have vibration from this pen. It is vibrating. If we go deep in, we can see that within you know, the molecules, there are these tiny little atoms and the atoms are vibrating. And between the space and that, there's vibration. And this is 97% not solid. It's 97% empty space. So everything moves at vibration. The whole universe moves at vibration. Thought moves at vibration. It's higher vibration thought, lower vibration thought. And when we bring all of this together, we can realize that with everything moving, we can begin to align our vibration to be in alignment with the things we want. If you heard my law of attraction, three big mistakes that people make, it's thinking that everything is separate from us and we have to attract something. Really, we have to just be aligned with the vibration because we already are connected to it we are just at a different vibration level. So your own vibration can be high, can be low, it moves. And all of that also works with principle one, that everything is mind. When you change your mind vibration, meaning you lift the energy field of your thought to a higher plane, you also begin to do what? You begin to be more connected to thought fields of high vibration. And because it is the second rule that as above, so below, you also connect in to higher realms of vibration that exist above you or in planes that we have not yet explored, like the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions. That's how when you get into a high state of awareness, as in like a meditation or activation, you can open up a channel to wisdom and guidance that comes from the higher realms. This is how I channel. This is how, if you watch my videos, we'll use the pendulums and we will allow higher dimensional energy to come in. It's all connected. So this occult and mystic uh, level of knowledge is not just for the high priestesses of ancient times. It's applying today in what is being done. Principle of polarity is number four. Everything has duality. Everything has poles. Everything has opposites. Um, opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. So if we remember that everything has two poles, it's really important whenever we're looking for higher wisdom and guidance to stay balanced. This is basically the the law of understanding that there are going to be two sides to everything. There's going to be hot, cold, um, light, dark, good, bad, right, wrong. Most people who unplug from the higher truth or the higher potential of awareness, they get on one side or the other. If you look at political arguments, people will get so infuriated or so passionate about one big idea that they can't see anything else. And you actually don't want to do that. You want to stay balanced. So you always want to keep the balanced perspective because when you do that, now you can actually go to a higher level of understanding. The media traditionally will find the most targeted stories that create fear and anger and discord and attach all of that into our emotional field so we stay polar. And this polarity actually is used 
in many respects as a way that we become a little bit weakened. We lose our connection. Um, and if we understand that everything is polar and and not just just you know one way or the other, we also can understand that there is good and bad in everyone. There's no one person that is 100% bad and 100% good. And so if you find this how you can use it in your life, if you have someone who you really feel dislike for, you can disarm that dislike. You can bring it back into neutrality, which is a higher vibrational element, which is beyond the level of fear and anger and all of that by thinking about some good traits that they have or some times that maybe you've done something that they did. So if there's a figure you don't like, you can say, all right, well, I don't like what they did here, but is there anything about them I like? Is there anything about them that's similar to me? Is there any time that I've done something similar, maybe not as bad, but maybe in the same degree? So for example, I was working with uh, someone and they had a situation where a parent really had done some things that were bullying to them. And I asked the question, was there ever a time that you were bullying or you did something to another person or animal that maybe they didn't want? This person had a very hard time figuring it out. And as long as they stayed in that polarity, the pain was really strong. And then all of a sudden, this lady's eyes lit up and she said, you know, when I was a girl, I remember there was a kid in my class and I was really mean to that kid. I really bullied that kid. I didn't give that kid the due respect and honor that they deserved. And all of a sudden the polarity broke and, and she was able to like see a little bit more of that midpoint and this calm came over her, this neutrality came over her and the emotions lifted. She couldn't see the same situation the same way anymore. So that polarity actually can entrap us or it can actually free us. So we don't want to honestly in applying this be too far one way or the other. The principle of rhythm, now, you may be trying to do certain things in your life. I know I've been there. And when we are pushing against reality and we're not maybe getting what we want, we're not seeing it come into fruition, we're not there yet, we have to remember this hermetic law of wisdom. This is the fifth principle of rhythm, is that everything flows out and in. Everything has tides all things rise, all things fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. So in your life, when you go through very challenging things, you are going to find that there is a season where the challenges are there. And if you stay open to watching the law of rhythm take effect and you prepare for that, you're going to see the pendulum swing the other way and good things come into your world. Good things come into your favor. This is in all affairs, they say, as, the, as of the universe, the suns, the worlds, men, women, animals, mind, energy, and matter. This law manifests in creation and destruction of the worlds, in the rise and fall of nations, in the life of all things, and in the mental states of man. One of the things that in New Age and self-growth we talk a lot about is feeling our feelings. Because when we feel our feelings and we don't suppress them, we actually allow this law of rhythm to work. So if you have a bad experience and you say, I really just want to cry right now. And, and if you say, no, I can't, I've got to think positive. I've got to use, you know, the law of attraction, which many of you know, I can't stand that name. I think it's inaccurate. You're connected to everything. There's nothing to attract. You're just vibrating or bringing into your awareness because all is mind principle one, the things you want so you can find them in your reality. But if you allow yourself to feel the feeling, cry, be upset, you then allow this rhythm to oscillate the pendulum in the other direction. You allow it to go from one place of being sad and fully experiencing the sad so then you can move into happiness. And what you'll find is if you experience the, ha the sadness fully, there's a part of you that then says, okay, I'm done. I want to move to the happiness. I want to move to the light. I want to move to the you know beautiful new start. Well, if you suppress... You never really let that law of rhythm work for you. So there's times in my life where if I 
feel like I want to just be down. I've slept, you know, for a whole day if I could before kids, um, just to let myself just crash. I'd wake up the next day. The law of rhythm naturally had me getting up early, had me flooded with new ideas, had me flooded with new inspiration, flooded with new optimism because I let that experience take its course and I let the systems of the of the planet actually move the pendulum back into where I wanted to go. So use that, think about it in your life. You don't want to be sort of pushing, pushing, pushing constantly. You don't want to be looking also at everything as a curse because when bad things happen or bad luck happens or something doesn't work out, remember that pendulum is going to swing the other way. So you can be at peace, you can be neutral, you can find the blessing in it. Now the principle of cause and effect is number six. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. This is really key because a lot of folks think that there is no cause and effect. You know, we will say that I want to attract something in my life and I'm just going to hold this energy and hopefully I'm going to have more abundance or more possibility or better relationship. But even underneath the idea of bringing something into our field that we want, the law of cause and effect plays a part. The cause of getting what you want is actually being in alignment with that, putting out the energy, the uh, gifts, the ideas, the truths that align with that so that you are able to receive it. Um, so for example, if I wanna experience maybe more abundance, one of the causes of abundance that's fairly well established is supplying a value to people who will be willing to exchange a certain um, item for that value, for that contribution. That is a very surefire cause of creating abundance. Good relationship, if I want love in my life, the, the cause of a good relationship is not going to be belittling someone or coming home and dumping all of your emotional trash on them and then leaving. That would be uh, the cause of a breakup. And I know I've been through that married once before. It is, and I've done it and wrongly so, but it is about understanding the cause of the thing. So when you want to attract things in your life, quote unquote, um, you want to be aligned, not with the effect effect of something, but the cause. I gave an example yesterday in a video where I said, you know, I've been to the seminars many years ago, back in 2005, right after The Secret came out. And I remember there were all these people attending and different speakers were talking. And one of the speakers said, you know, if you want that jacket, go out and buy that expensive jacket because it's going to make you abundant. You're going to feel abundant. You're going to attract abundance. I do not think that is correct because that is the effect. The jacket is an effect that if someone had money, they could afford it. This person didn't have the money. So what you really would want to do is go to the cause. The cause of being able to buy a jacket or afford it would be giving maybe a service, giving value, feeling good about yourself, feeling like there's a lot of possibilities in the world. So you started giving of yourself or your gifts or your knowledge in a way that allowed you to exchange for value more currency or uh, wealth that would let you buy the jacket. So the law of attraction seemingly works more with this law of cause and bring yourself in alignment with the cause. So for example, if I want uh, a good relationship, I am not just going to sit on the couch and say, okay, give me the good relationship. I'm going to maybe be the type of person who goes to classes to learn how to be more self-aware, who meditates, who uh, takes care of other people or is treating my dog nicely, treating my family nicely. So then I get into the space of being a person who operates within that realm. And then I have created the cause set in motion that the effect will be people will see and I will hold the energy of being uh, someone who can be uh, in a good relationship. So remember, everything is cause and effect. There are many planes of creation, but nothing escapes this law. Now, this is an interesting piece here. Um, the masses of people are carried along obedient to the environment. The wills, desires of others stronger than themselves, heredity, suggestion, and outward causes moving them like pawns in the chessboard of life. So if you go about your day and you get cut off in traffic by somebody who's in a bad mood and you say, oh, I had a terrible day. This person caused me 
to just have a horrible day or you just ruined my day. That is not the cause of you having a bad day. That is a choice. That is the will or the act of someone else putting an energy into your field that you accept. You are the first cause of everything you feel. Once we remember the first law that everything is mind and we begin to actually understand that. Now, here's what they said about using this law. The masters rising to the plane above dominate their moods, characters, qualities, and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them and become movers instead of pawns. They help play the game of life instead of being played and moved about by other wills and environment. So you can be the cause of your life by taking a moment to ground in to what you want, to what you want to experience in this reality. Going back to number one, all is mind. All is mind. So all is created first from that first cause, which always is mind. And that once grounded in, irregardless of everything else going on in your life, can lead the course to where you want to go. Now, we'll talk about this as well in relation to energy, because when we say mind, I want you to think beyond just the brain. I want you to think about the universal mind of creator of God. And I want you to think of your own awareness to connect to that universal mind and that higher self. And that being the primary cause of what we experience. So we want to actually go higher in to that infinite awareness and connect into that, that being the cause and the creator of everything. And they understood this. That's why if you can get aligned with your truth, aligned with higher vibration, aligned with um, letting go of old energies and polarizing energies. Remember the law of polarity, that these things exist in our world. There is up and down, left, right, light, dark, good, bad. There's not any of us that haven't experienced something, varying degrees in all people, of course. But once we let go of the polarity, we come to the balance point, we then can connect into that higher realm, that higher universal mind. And this is the basis of why that's important. Now, the principle of gender, this um, is really interesting because creation always works within gender. I'm not just talking about reproduction, but that when we want to create something, we have to go through a process. There is an ebb and a flow. There is a masculine plane and a physical and a, and a female plane. There is a creation energy. There is a nurturing energy. There is a flowing energy where everything sort of just flows. And then there is an energy where you must exert your will or you must exert a little bit of your own uh, power to make it happen. So gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests in all planes. So the way this works in our life is if we want to create something, if we assume it's all going to be flow and easy and it's just going to come together like you know nothing at all and with no effort, it, it can be a very hard process and it, it's not aligning with this law. There will be times that that masculine driving energy is going to be needed to get it off the ground. I'll give you an example. When I bought this microphone, I had a lot of problems with it. It didn't work. I had to get an upgrade. I had to get a new driver. I had to um, figure it out. I had to spend hours setting it up. It didn't sound right. I had to figure out what all the knobs meant. In my mind, I saw sort of like this beautiful flow that I got this inspiration to upgrade the microphone. It was going to be perfect. Well, it didn't work that way. That flowing energy was one side of the masculine feminine duality. It was fun to buy the microphone. It was exciting to go to the store. It was nice to talk to the man about how good I wanted everything to sound right there. But the reality was there was going to be a little bit of challenge and I needed to have the will that driving energy to make it come to fruition. It's like that with nearly everything in our world. So if we understand that it's part of the plan, part of the creation energy, then it's okay. And we can say, well, we welcome it. And it's going to be like that in the things that you do. You're going to have times things flow. You can have times when you have to push a little bit uphill. The most important thing though to realize is that it's not the universe or spirit or your own inadequacy showing up saying, you can't have it. You're not good enough. It's not going to work. 
It's actually part of how things are created. And within women and men, there's a masculine and a feminine energy. Women cannot, you know, we shouldn't just, if we're a woman, say we're not going to have any of that driving energy. We're just going to, you know, let it flow. And men, same thing. If we just let it flow and we don't have any of that driving energy, we can tend to uh, not create what we want. If we also don't have any of that flowing feminine energy, the appreciation of beauty and just that beautiful nurturing soul that comes through women when they're in the flow and connected to everything, we as men are absolutely dried out. So it's within all of us, it's in everything, and we want to just accept the balance and be okay with it and use all of it as a point for us to create. So those are the seven hermetic philosophies as taught by the three initiates from this book, the Kaibalion. And if you want to uh, learn more about it, I'll post a link down below. You can check it out. This is the cornerstone of alchemy, magic, the green tablet, the emerald tablets, and m new age thought, even some of the occult wisdom for manifesting. And so some interesting things, you can go very deep into these secrets of the universe, but they play out and they form the basis of our reality. And if you want some more help or guidance, we investigate things like this and we do energy processes and transformative work every day at my show, You Wealth Revolution. So if you scroll down, the first link in the description is going to have a beautiful MP3 that is a 1074 hertz frequency called Pure Joy. Now, this is part of the Solfigio frequencies, which is an ancient mathematical frequency that is aligned with the sacred ratio. And what happened apparently at some point in the 1930s and 40s is that our music frequencies that we hear on the radio and TV was shifted from our original uh, sacred ratio to something else. And these discordant frequencies are not necessarily in the highest alignment. If you've ever been um, through the messages with the water with Dr. Ramoto, or you're familiar with that work, we can see that certain words spoken or music played in a discordant frequency actually change the crystalline structure of the water going from something beautiful and perfectly aligned and in patterns that were breathtaking to this chaotic, you know, disheveled, dysmorphic pattern of chaos. And so this frequency called pure joy is one of the highest of these solfigio frequencies, and you can listen to it free by going to the first link in the description down below. It's our gift. And if you want to hear calls that touch on topics like this, but also do energy healing work to bring all of this in alignment, then plug into my show, You Wealth Revolution. Thanks so much for being here and checking this out. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and hit share if you liked it and let me know your comments or any areas I missed or clarifications you need regarding these seven laws. Go back, apply them to your life and see how they affect and can change everything. Much love. Thanks for watching.